Let's also talk about comedian Joe Lycett. He's revealed that an audience member in one of his stand-up shows, so someone who's paid it for a ticket because they, oh, Joe Lycett's on tour. I'm going to go watch Joe Lycett on tour. And they've paid and sat in the audience, but they left one of his stand-up shows and then called the police after being offended by a joke about... Uh, we're calling it a donkey's appendage. That's all we know about it. Uh, um, um, and, um, and, and, they, and the police decided to turn up. Now, bad enough that someone complained to the police, and I think they should actually be take, prosecuted for wasting police time. But even worse, surely, that the police said they felt that it was important and re responsible for them to actually go and question Joe Lycett about this. They had actually went and visited him to question him about it. So, I mean, well, it's, it's both absurd and incredibly sinister, is it not? Indeed, absurd, uh, sinister and entirely predictable because the police have this whole range of laws now where they are entitled and given the opportunity to investigate any incident where they think some hate of some variety may have taken place. I'm sure you would have heard of this very menacing law, non-crime hate incidents. Yeah. Where the police oh, can I correct you? It's not a law. This is something that, you know, that the, the police have made up themselves. There is no law that, you, there's no crime of a non, as you say, a non-crime hate incident because it's not a crime. But the police are recording this anyway. Absolutely. And I think, you know, it's unfortunate this has happened to Joe Lycett. I think it's fair to categorise him as one of those comics who has those ideologically limited kind of blinkers when it comes to his humour. Yeah. And he, I think he will, you know, just as much as most mainstream comics nowadays, support the kind of censorious, sensitive culture around comedy, yep. and now it's come round to bite him on the arse. So yeah. he can't really complain too much. Perhaps, yeah. finally now, it might lead to him and plenty of other comics realising that free speech and the freedom to offend are vitally important and the lifeblood of comedy. Absolutely. The lifeblood of freedom of speech. Again, same people saying things you don't... If you don't like, like a joke, don't laugh at it. Don't watch this. Don't watch the Netflix special. Or don't go and buy a ticket or leave. No one cares whether you're offended or not. You don't get to have a say in what other people think and can say in in a free country. I, I really think we're going to have to stand up for this. But again, it's really interesting. So many people on the left getting hit by this and suddenly realizing, oh, maybe I should have worried about this before. Charlie Peters, always good to talk to you. Thank you very much for joining us. Nine fifty-five is the time. Mike Graham is here. Hello. Have you ever complained to the police about being offended by a joke? Uh, I haven't ever done that. With actually. that. But isn't it funny? Why don't the police just say, get lost? What are you doing? Why this, are you reporting I'm, I this? I am more bothered. There's always going to be an idiot or yeah. two. I'm more bothered by the fact the police don't even investigate burglaries. No. There's a so, million unsolved burglaries. Yeah. A million. But, but yeah, oh, someone made a joke about yeah. a donkey's penis. I mean, it's really ridiculous. Is that what it's about? That's what it's about. Oh, you're, you're, you're want, you want to snigger now, don't you? I know that. Well, yeah, I, was, <laughs> I wasn't going to mention it, but now that you have the cats out of the bag, as it were, <laughs> and it turns everything else. Um, tell us about yeah. Joe Lysette, because he's had an interesting uh, couple of days. Well, Joe Lysette is a funny comedian, does stand-up tours, and uh, he revealed uh, in the past couple of days that uh, after one gig, uh, when he told a joke, shall we say it? Well, I don't see why I can't say it. We're all grown-ups. He told a joke about a donkey's appendage. Right. Uh, somebody uh, reported him to the police, and the police contacted him and questioned him about it. Uh, he said they were very polite uh, and they went their separate ways. But what I want to know is, as a taxpayer, and I think we should all ask this question, uh, why are the police taking our money, yeah. not investigating burglaries, not investigating car thieves, uh, not investigating us getting beaten up in the street, but leaping to attention to uh, investigate a joke told by a comedian at a paid-for gig. Yeah. This is outrageous. They've got to stop this nonsense. Mm. Surely somebody in the police should tell the police and say, look, if people start ringing you up to complain about comedians telling jokes, tell them that this, you've, you've rung the wrong number, call the Samaritans or somebody else, because we're not interested. Yeah, I mean, if anything, to say, well... Uh, uh, that maybe that comedian wasn't funny, but this complaint is funny. You know, you're complaining about a joke that yeah. a comedian paid for. If you don't like the show, leave. Yes. You know, I mean, the police must stop doing this. They've got to stop patrolling the tweets and start patrolling the streets. It's as simple as that. Investigating jokes by comedians. I mean, look at yourselves, you stupid coppers. <laughs> stop doing this. Now, what, what surprises have you got in store for me, uh, and not least just me, but all the other people gonna, who are going to be watching our show on Saturday night? Because uh, you're mainly the inspiration for most of what we do. So tell us what you're going to do. 
Well, uh, you know, you and I, uh, uh, Mike, uh, as broadcasters, we're famous for our sense of balance. Aren't of course, we? very much so. Uh, and we're going to be testing that on Saturday. We will be finding out whether or not you and I uh, can balance on one leg, because it turns out that if you can balance on one leg, and shall we say you're into middle age, for more than 10 seconds, then you're going to live for a long, long time. I tried it this morning. I think I'm going to be dead in about a week. So, uh, <laughs> But uh, you and I... Uh, testing our famous sense of balance on Saturday night, plus all the other uh, excellent features that we yes. uh, run up into the week. Yes, I shall very much look forward to that because, of course, um, it's been one of the biggest weeks again in news, which every single week I can't quite believe gets bigger. Um, but you know what we missed out on this week was the summer yeah. solstice because I remember, yeah. normally speaking, uh, we would have gone to Stonehenge or at some point to talk to some crazy druid. Well, we should have um, done that. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll get a druid on and ask him what they do like three days after the solstice. I have to say that the, the, the pictures that people were posting of the summer solstice, the sun rising uh, over st or under Stonehenge, yeah. as it were, and shining through those giant uh, stones, were just amazing pictures, amazing pictures. But as for the summer solstice actually meaning anything, well, good luck with that. Yeah, absolutely right. Just we'll a see date. I'm just also, a date. Just a date, <laughs> as, as, as it will be on Saturday night, 7 o'clock. Kevin, thanks very much indeed. Kevin O'Sullivan will join me uh, on Saturday night, 7 p.m. You don't want to miss it. Uh, it's the funniest show, I think, uh, on television at that time. Uh, also, of course, he's got his own show on Sunday afternoon as well. Uh, there's much more for us to do here uh, before we get to Prime Minister's questions. This is Talk TV.